Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Chaitra Asnilampar. I'm an obstetrician and gynecologist working in the Department of Reproductive Immunology from Chandray Immunology and Rheumatology Center. Well, first of all, a very happy International Women's Day to all my sweet ladies out there. Usually we need to prepare for our talks, but today being our day, I thought it is very essential for me to keep it really spontaneous for you. And so I decided I will only be talking to you about the common health issues that we Indian women face. The commonest health issue that I see in my OPDs these days are irregular periods. I cannot say these days, it's the commonest complaint that teenage girls usually come with and also somewhere in the reproductive age group. Now, is it essential for us to have our cycles every single month? Does it have to be exactly in 30 days? Do I have to be only for three to five days? Well, let me just clear some of those doubts. Now, when we say cycles, when I say regular cycles, I mean, a person should have cycles once in anywhere between 25 to 40, 45 days. She should have a period for around three to five days of flow. Some days, sometimes some girls will have it for seven days and she can have a little bit of spotting on the last two days. It is not essential for her to have exactly 12 cycles in one year. A frequency, the amount of days that the cycles are coming, those have to be regular. Well, this becomes important. A lot of women who come to us will be with absence of cycle, long-term absence of cycle. First and foremost thing that we suggest to them is please do your pregnancy test if you're sexually active, and then we will give them withdrawal bleeding. We will definitely have to work her up to see why did she delay on her cycles or why did she have her absence of cycles. And the commonest thing, which I'm sure most of y'all will be knowing about, is a polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is the commonest cause why a girl can have a long term absence of periods. Apart from that, there can be thyroid issues. Anemia also has a role to play with menstrual irregularity. The second most common thing that we see in our day to day practice is white discharge. Some women come to us and say, I'm having white discharge. Uh, does excessive white discharge cause tiredness in the body? Well, let me tell you one thing. White discharge is a normal physiological change in our body. One particular part of your cycle, you will experience a little bit of white discharge. Now, when should you be concerned? When the white discharge is stained with blood, when it is foul smelling, or it is creating a discomfort for you, itching in the genitals. These are the associated symptoms when present with white discharge, you should visit your gynecologist. The next thing, pain abdomen. Vague pain abdomen, sometimes pain during menstruation. Now, pain abdomen, especially in women, commonly it will be because of urinary tract infection when it is in the lower abdomen. But yes, we should not forget the surgical causes like the appendicitis or even the renal calculi or the renal stones. During periods, yes, some girls do experience pain. And for this, the cause can be a fibroid, an endometriosis, adenomyosis, or even an infection can create a lot of pain. So when you have a pain which is creating a discomfort for you, preventing you from doing your day-to-day -day activity, make sure you do talk to your doctor about it. The next thing what we usually face is fertility issues. Well, sadly, we are progressing so well as a country we are striving to come, become a developed country from a developing country. But what we see these days is a lot of infertile couples visiting us in our OPDs. Infertility is increasing a lot. And there are many attributory causes why infertility is increasing, both in males as well as females. So yes, that is again by itself a long topic. And we will be doing shortly a video on infertility and causes of infertility in females and in males. And the next common thing that I usually am observing these days and it's increasing again is obesity. Now, should I blame COVID because we've been so static for the last two years? Obesity is really increasing. On 4th of March, we recently launched our obesity clinic in Chantry to help people with overweight and obesity. Obesity by itself has a lot of health impacts on everyone, be it female or male. It has an effect on the diabetic status. It increases the chance of having diabetes, hypertension, coronary artery disease. Fertility also falls with obesity. So yes, obesity is a concern uh, health problem which we need to address. 
and the next. And one issue which I usually like to talk to my women, irrespective of uh, what the age group is, is a screening method. Breast cancer is overtaken cancer cervix and today is the leading cause of cancer in women in India today. So I am asking and requesting all my fellow ladies and women to please practice self-breast examination. You can do it on 1st of every month or the first of day of your period, but make sure that you ritually perform this to pick up any masses in the breast at an early stage. Cancer cervix. Coming second to breast cancer, Cancer cervix is the cancer of the womb, of the mouth of the womb. It is at the entry of the uterus. It is caused by a virus, which is called the human papilloma virus. Yes, definitely the cases are high, but we have a boom. We have pap smear, which helps us pick up this cancer at an early stage. So we prevent them from developing the cancer, or if they have in the early stages, we can even treat it effectively. Also, what is available these days is uh, the human papilloma virus vaccine, which can be given to girls after the age of nine years, the best result before she's sexually active. It is given in three doses. And the next one, what we usually see is domestic violence and a lot of um, psychiatric issues, and which has increased these days, especially over the past two years during the pandemic. Yes, women do face a lot of hormonal changes, which could lead to a little bit of mood changes as well. So all that she requires will definitely be your family help. And yes, if you feel it is disturbing your day-to-day -day activity or it is affecting your family life, it becomes essential for you to talk to your counselor or to your psychologist. So again, wishing all my fellow women a very happy Women's Day and have a great day. Namaste.